All right, picture this. You're in the gym. Goal, build bigger, stronger glutes and hamstrings. So you grab a kettlebell and start hammering out swings. Then you grind out sets of Romanian deadlifts. Both are hip hinges. Both leave your backside screaming. So they're basically the same thing, right? Just pick one, go hard, and get huge. What if I told you that's dead wrong? What if one of these is way, way better for building muscle and the other is a tool you might be using completely wrong if getting bigger is your only goal? We've dug into the biomechanics, torn through the EMG studies, and gone back to the first principles of muscle growth to settle this thing. In this video, we're breaking down the science to show you which of these two beasts gives you more muscle for your sweat. And the answer might just change how you train forever. The Shared Goal – Engineering Hypertrophy Before we make these two fight, let's find the common ground. Both the kettlebell swing and the Romanian deadlift, the RDL, are built on the hip hinge. This isn't just bending over. It's a key human movement where you shoot your hips back, keep your spine pretty straight, and only bend your knees a little. This move is designed to load up your posterior chain, your glutes, hamstrings, and lower back. And both exercises do it incredibly well. The other thing they have in common is the goal, hypertrophy. It's the sciency word for muscle growth. We're not just talking about strength. We're talking about making the actual muscle fibers bigger. To figure out which exercise wins, you have to know what actually causes hypertrophy. The number one driver is mechanical tension. Think of it as the force your muscles feel when they stretch and contract against a heavy weight. The more tension you can create and hold, especially when the muscle is stretched out, the louder the signal for it to grow. So the real question isn't which one works the hamstrings, it's which one creates the best kind of tension to force your hamstrings to get bigger. The case for the Romanian deadlift, the king of tension. First up, the Romanian deadlift. The RDL is all about controlled force. It's slow. It's deliberate. The main point isn't just lifting the weight, it's controlling the weight on the way down. That downward part is called the eccentric, and it's where the RDL makes its case for being the muscle-building king. When you're lowering a heavy barbell during an RDL, your hamstrings and glutes are getting longer while under a ton of tension. This is what's known as stretch-mediated hypertrophy, and research shows it's a powerful trigger for muscle growth. It's like stretching a rubber band to its absolute limit. That feeling of tension is what tells the muscle it needs to get bigger and stronger to handle it next time. The RDL lets you really milk that eccentric phase, taking maybe three to five seconds to lower the weight, maximizing time under the most productive kind of tension. But here's the most critical point for the RDL, progressive overload. Mechanical tension is all about dosage. More weight, safely, means more tension, and more growth. The RDL is a stable, controlled lift, which means you can load it up, and I mean really load it up, way heavier than you could ever safely swing a kettlebell. You can consistently add five pounds, then another five, always challenging your muscles with more weight. This is the undisputed number one rule for long-term muscle growth. The RDL is a specialist. It targets the glutes and hamstrings with ruthless efficiency, putting them under high, sustained tension, especially in that deep, stretched position where all the magic happens. Its job is simple. Create as much muscle-building tension as possible. The case for the kettlebell swing, the powerhouse. Now let's flip over to the kettlebell swing. If the RDL is a slow, grinding siege on your muscles, the swing is a cannon blast. This move isn't about slow tension. It's about creating as much speed and power as you can. The whole point of the swing is that violent, explosive hip thrust that sends the kettlebell flying. So what's the swing good for? Power and conditioning. Power is all about generating force quickly, which is crucial for any athlete. The explosive snap of the swing trains your nervous system to fire your muscles faster and harder, 
which carries over to everything from sprinting and jumping to golf. And since you're usually doing swings for higher reps, they are an incredible conditioning tool. They'll jack your heart rate up and build your work capacity in a way that a few slow, heavy RDLs just can't touch. And don't get me wrong, from a muscle activation standpoint, swings are no joke. They absolutely blast the glutes and hamstrings. That explosive hip extension creates a huge peak contraction. Plus, because it's a dynamic, full-body move, it recruits your core to stay stable, your lats to control the bell, and even your quads. The argument for the swing is that it's an athlete's exercise. It builds a powerful, resilient, and well-conditioned body. It teaches you to move as one explosive unit. It definitely stimulates the right muscles, but the big question is, is that explosive, peak stimulus, better? for making muscles bigger. The Scientific Showdown, what the EMG studies reveal. Okay, so we have two hip hinges. One is slow and heavy, focused on the stretch. The other is fast and explosive, focused on the contraction. To pick a winner for hypertrophy, we need to see what's actually happening inside the muscle. That's where EMG, or electromyography, studies come in. They use electrodes to measure the electrical buzz in a muscle, which gives us a pretty good idea of how hard it's working. And the research is pretty clear. Multiple studies confirm that both RDLs and kettlebell swings are fantastic for lighting up the hamstrings. They both tend to fire up a specific hamstring muscle called the semitendinosus, the one on the inside of your thigh. Its long muscle fibers are perfect for the deep range of motion in a hip hinge. So if they both activate the muscle, what's the difference? For hypertrophy, sustained tension and load are king. A kettlebell swing creates a massive peak of muscle activation right at that explosive moment of the thrust. But the RDL creates high sustained activation through the entire lift, especially during that muscle building negative. And because you can load RDLs so much heavier, the total potential for mechanical tension is just flat out higher when you're working in that 6 to 12 rep range for growth. Sure, some research has found that kettlebell swings can sometimes activate the biceps femoris, the outer hamstring, a little better, but that's a tiny detail in a much bigger picture. The single biggest factor for growth is the ability to progressively add more weight over time. You can go from RDLing 135 pounds to 225, then 315. You just can't make those kinds of jumps with a kettlebell swing without your form completely falling apart and turning it into a dangerous, sloppy mess. The ceiling for getting stronger is just so much higher with the RDL. The verdict and the nuance. So after looking at the mechanics, the principles of growth, and the science, a clear winner emerges. For the specific goal of making your hamstrings and glutes as big as possible, the Romanian deadlift is the superior exercise. It's not that it's a better exercise overall, but it perfectly matches the main driver of muscle growth, high sustained mechanical tension that you can consistently increase over time. The RDL lets you load your glutes and hamstrings through a deep controlled stretch in a way the swing just can't replicate, but and this is a really big but. This does not mean kettlebell swings are useless, not even close. Saying the RDL is better for hypertrophy is like saying a screwdriver is better than a hammer for putting in a screw. It doesn't mean the hammer is a bad tool. It just means you're using it for the wrong job. The kettlebell swing is an elite level tool for building explosive power, jacking up your metabolic conditioning, and improving your all-around athleticism. Practical application. So what do you do with this information? Simple. Stop thinking of these two as enemies and start thinking of them as partners with different jobs. If your number one goal is building the biggest, meatiest hamstrings and glutes you can, the Romanian deadlift needs to be a cornerstone of your training. Make it a main lift. Do it early in your workout when you're fresh Focus on perfect controlled form and do three to four heavy sets of six to 12 reps. Really own that negative 
feel the deep stretch, and focus on adding weight to the bar over weeks and months. So where do kettlebell swings go? They're an amazing accessory or conditioning tool. Throw them in after your main strength work as a finisher to absolutely cook your posterior chain while getting your heart rate up. Or put them on a separate athletic-focused day to build power without the heavy spinal load of max effort deadlifts. Use them to become a better athlete, not just a bigger one. The final verdict is this. The Romanian deadlift is your chisel for sculpting muscle. The kettlebell swing is your engine for building athletic power. Use the chisel to build and the engine to perform. Use both correctly and you'll get better results in size and in what you can actually do with that muscle.